Morning guys, it is a cold morning up here in Alaska. It's four degrees Fahrenheit this morning. We're heading out on a fishing trip to a remote lake. We got the snow machines loaded up. We're ready to head out. Let's go fishing. <laughs> Really windy out here. I made it out to the lake and everything rode pretty good. We've learned doing many trips ice fishing. The trails out here are extremely bumpy, so we bring lots of extra padding. This time I actually disassembled the auger. Looks like she made it perfectly. We put this thing back together. We actually took a, uh, well, we didn't take a wrong turn. We kind of missed our turn coming out here. So we had to backtrack a couple miles. It's extremely windy out here. So the valley over there, the trail just gets wind blown and you basically can't even see the trail. So we turned around, we found it. I think we've been about 23 or 24 miles on the snow machines to get out here. So the plan is today to target pike and we're gonna do four holes. We're gonna jig two holes and we're gonna do tip ups and the other two holes and we brought the secret weapon as bait for our tip ups. I'll show you that in a minute. Loving that gas auger. Those are gonna be our two jigging holes since they're close to each other. And then we're gonna set a tip up up further out and then one closer to the shoreline. one so as you can tell this is a super duper secret remote lake but there's actually an eagle who has joined us today maybe we'll catch a fish for him another bald eagle has joined us and someone landed in a plane over there so hopefully they don't steal all the fish before we can get to them actually out here about three months ago maybe two and a half to three months ago and the holes have gotten significantly deeper the funniest thing is that we actually used to have a manual auger so 
I can just imagine how hard that'd be. We've got all four holes drilled, so we're gonna get to fishing. Got these two nice big treble hooks. These are gonna be going on our tip ups. And for bait, we've had no luck with the herring. We've fished these tip ups probably close to 10 times. We've never got anything. So we brought hot dogs. We're gonna see what we could do with these things. We've read some stuff online that people are catching pike on hot dogs. And we're gonna stick a whole hot dog on each one of these tip ups and we're gonna set them out there and we're gonna see what happens. Hey, they're not frozen either. That's it. That's what the tip ups are gonna look like today. We'll get this other hot dog on and we're gonna get these things set. How deep did you set it? Probably about two feet below the hole. Okay. Look for the flag on that one, huh? All right, got our tip up set. We just gotta wait for the flags now. And let's head over to the sled. We're gonna get our poles rigged up. Like I mentioned before, these trails coming ice fishing, a lot of them are extremely bumpy. We have all that heavy equipment inside there, like the ice auger, all the fishing gear, things like that. And I think not the last time we went ice fishing, but the time before we actually broke one of our little ice fishing poles. So I went online to try to find a case for these things and they were super expensive, but I found a video of a guy made these awesome little rod holders and I went and bought some PVC pipe and some caps and I think it cost me $12 to build both of these and I got some leftover pipe at home but all I did was I had these little gear ties at home already I used those and then I just drilled a hole for the gear tie and cut a little notch where the pole goes in there and these things are like freaking solid I just strapped them on the back of my machine I'm pretty sure I can just throw these in the sled we can throw these in the truck so Pretty excited on these little things. Anyways, that's that's Ariel's pole. It goes in there. And another cool thing about these little uh, rod holders or the protectors is you can um, put your fishing pole in there with your lure and stuff still on it. So this one, the lure's not on it, but I do have my um, steel leader and everything on this one. So pretty cool little thing. These work pretty good on the way out here. Two different setups. I'm going with my favorite. The blue fox, I think this is called a red devil, I believe. This one seems to always work for me, so that's what I'm gonna use. Ariel, she wanted to switch things up. She did some research and she's gonna use a tube jig and we're gonna put that on a little jig head. So she's gonna be using a jig head, which is like a, I don't know if you can see that's a weight and it comes back and it's got a single hook on there. And all you do is stick it through the jig, pull it around and it's got a little notch right there. You push the jig over that that kind of holds it on there. And then you put your line right there and then that kind of jigs around the water. So I think she's gonna have good luck on this one. I've got a steel leader on mine and we're hooking aerials up with a, uh, it's not a steel leader, but it's a really heavy fishing line. I believe it's like 50 pound test. So these pike got some sharp teeth. I don't want them biting through our line. All right, we are both ready to fish. Let's try to catch some pike. What does Miller Light taste like? Like many beers, I don't know. Like what? Like Bud Light or something, probably. Well, I think we've been fishing for maybe an hour. No action at all yet. Nothing on the tip ups. I just checked them, scraped the ice off them. No action, everything's looking good on them. I like to stay at one spot. Last time I came out to this lake, I think we fished for about two hours before I got my first bite and then we caught three fish. So I'm gonna keep at it. Hopefully we'll get something. He's on, he's on, he's on. You know what to do? Don't you pull it when they stop? Got him. Oh. He got off? 
No, he's on. He's on. He's a nice one. Well, do you need help? Do you know how to do it? Oh no! He's, oh no! He's coming up backwards. Woo! Yes, got one on the hot dog. <laughs> Dang! Make and sure. he, the hot dog's gone. So either he ate it or it fell off. But we got one on the hot dog. I cannot believe it. First pike we have ever caught on a tip up, and we got him on the hot dog. You got that hot dog in there still? No, he dropped the hot dog. Nice looking pike. Hey, he's alive still. Watch out. Heck yeah. Woo. Awesome. I'm going to get another dog on this thing and we'll keep on fishing. So I got another dog on here. And that's just how I had it hooked last time. One hook through there. Let's put it back down here and see if we can get another one. He's on. He's on? Yeah, but there's ice. Just break the ice, pull him up. I don't know how to do this. Break the ice. He's he's fighting though, hard. Oh, little guy. Oh. Cool. He went for the hot dog. Yeah, I, I felt like it was little because it was, it's, it was fighting really hard. Oh, he's not coming off. He's on all three. You see that? I've never seen them bite all three of them. Nice. Got two for the meal tonight. Well, this one's a little bit smaller, but we'll take them. And he, he, oh, I'm sorry, fish. I'm pretty sure he ate the whole hot dog or it's gone. What happened? Do you see how well that hook is in there? No wonder that's not coming off. It's all three. Well, the tip ups and the hot dogs. <laughs> that's all we're getting them on today. What the yeah. heck? Well, they like hot dogs. Let's put more hot dogs. Nice I'm going to change probably... Why don't me and you fish with some hot dogs, yeah? Sure. Okay. That was crazy. I've never seen that before like that. Nice fish. Really wanted that hot dog, right? Nice small one. Are you 15 inches? Okay. Things are looking a little better, so we think we still have an hour left or so of fishing. Hopefully we'll catch one more. I'm going to be switching mine over to a hot dog instead of this lure. Since it's not really, nothing's been working but the hot dogs. I think we're just going to add the hot dog to the jig and see if that, see if that works. They seem to like them, so I'm betting it's the odor or the smell getting a little later in the day too so maybe that's what it is where we're fishing it's about five feet deep and the ice is probably two and a half feet deep so I'm just a little bit below where the ice is Eric yeah I have a fish Eric I have a pull he took my hot dog he took my hot dog right now right can I get another hot dog in there because that was really weird I just put the hot dog down and something bit it right away because as I went to, I was saying this is a five foot hole and so I don't usually have it at the bottom. I have it maybe, you know, like a foot off the bottom, a foot from the ice and yeah, no, something definitely took off the hot dog. So that's pretty crazy. I didn't get the fish, but he got the hot dog. So hopefully he comes back. Eric and I haven't been ice fishing too many times this season. Uh, I think we're really enjoying our day out here. Nice sunny day. I wanted to mention last time we went ice fishing, we had a few questions of folks asking about what you do when you leave, when you're done ice fishing, what do you do with the hole? Do you cover it back up? Do you just leave it out in the open? What about other people? And here you just leave it open because it freezes so quickly. In fact, it freezes usually while you're ice fishing. You'll have to get ice off your, your rod and your line and in the hole. We constantly are breaking the ice with these skimmers. So if you actually just pile it up with a whole bunch of snow, no one will know there's a hole there and it will insulate that hole and usually it won't freeze as quickly. So we just leave them all open. 
and they'll freeze up by tonight. So not only has this been our lucky day, we've caught two fish, we have this beautiful day out here in Alaska, but some poor soul, I don't know what they were doing out here, but they lost their 12 pack of beer. So, and it wasn't frozen. So Errol and I are enjoying a couple Miller Lights out here on the lake, just having a good time. And I think what we're gonna do with these pike, hopefully we'll catch one more, but if not, we got these two. We are gonna take them home and we're gonna make fish cakes or fish patties out of them. Should be very good. Can I have a beer? <laughs> huh? Can I have a beer? Your celebratory beer. Thanks, my boy. There you go. Thanks. And to keep these beverages from freezing out here, I don't know, it's probably about 10 degrees, so it's not extremely cold. We threw our little uh, hand warmer in there. It's like a little electric USB rechargeable hand warmer. We pretty much, we don't use this for a hand warmer. We use this for keeping stuff warm. We usually throw this in with our camera gear or we throw it in with like food that we don't want to freeze when we're going out to our cabin. But I got this in here. It's doing the trick, keeping our brewskis above freezing. All right, we still got our lines in the water, hoping for some more fish. What I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna fillet these ones out here since it's so cold, and usually when we catch pike, by the time we get home, they're frozen, they're a little harder to fillet. So I'm gonna get these two done, they're already starting to freeze up. So let's start with that first one. Oh, look what he's got in his stomach. A hot dog? A fish. What size fish? He's got a bunch of fish in his stomach. He's been eating. Look at that, he's got a, Should that's not a pike. Is that a salmon or a trout? He's got a nice sized fish in him. Looks like a salmonoid or something. Looks like a salmonoid. I don't he's know also what got, he's got. Whoa! <laughs> what is this? That's a pike. That's a pike. No. No, that's the same one. Put it like next a little to salmonoid. You got it next to the poop. Dang, that sucker was eating good. No hot dog. Ah, oh, my hands are so cold freezing out here. <gasps> you don't know what those are. That's what this pike was eating, but maybe like a little, I didn't know, I don't really know what kind of fish are in here. I thought there was just pike, but there's obviously some other little type of fish in here. So pretty cool. These fish have a big appetite. I'm pretty sure that's why he went for the hot dog. I'm just taking those two fillets off this fish. You can get more, you can get the back piece, and I think you can get a little ones off the tail, but we're just gonna use those for the fish cakes. We're gonna bring the carcasses home also with us. Give those to the chickens. Let's get this next one filleted. Nothing in this guy's stomach, he was hungry. All right. Whew, I gotta warm these hands up. You can do it for me right there, yeah. Got our fish. Cutting board can go in there. It's so gross. Can I use one of these rags? Oh yeah, I brought rags for that. You can use that one or this one. Alrighty guys, I think we're getting out of here. It's getting kind of late. We got the dogs at home, and we're gonna save these hot dogs for next time. Let's get loaded up. These are still good, right? Yeah. Okay, it's getting cold out here. Whew. Show you guys our little uh, ice fishing rod holders again. So we got Ariel's and she's still got the jig on it. Let's see how it fits in there with that jig on there. Let me reel that in a little more. Fits right in. Looping around a couple times. Ready to go for next time. There we go. Cool.
All right, that does it. We're ready to head home and cook some dinner. Made it back to the cabin. We're getting our pike fillets all cleaned up. We ended up with four beautiful little fillets. We're gonna be making some pike patties, and then we're also gonna make a beet coleslaw. Ariel's gonna jump in. She's gonna be making that for us today. These pike patties are gonna be pretty simple. We got an egg in there, garlic, salt, and pepper. We're gonna do a little cornmeal, and then I got a potato steaming over there, so we're gonna do like mashed potatoes in this. We only use two of the fillets for the pike patties, so the last two we have left over, we're just gonna marinate these in some olive oil, vinegar, and a little garlic, and we're gonna set them aside and have them another night. More cornmeal on these and then we're gonna shape them we're gonna fry them up and we're gonna use our Birmingham 10 inch skillet that we found that looks really good with the mashed potato that does it's like a beautiful one. A potato cake fish patties are cooking that should take about five minutes on each side I'm gonna mix up this beet coleslaw that Ariel made this is a coleslaw dressing she made the other day. It's got a bunch of stuff in there. Mayonnaise, kefir, mustard. I think she's got some celery leaves, some herbs and spices in there. Well, that looks pretty amazing. I'm gonna make another plate. We're gonna eat, and then we're gonna go out and feed the chickens those leftover pike carcasses. Sounds again. 